Greetings, Eric Packer from New Zealand, the naturopath from way down under in New Zealand. Thanks for coming back and checking out my YouTube channel. And this video, we're going to talk about Zyfaxin today. Rimafacin, I think it's called, let me just check on Google, I think it's called Rifaximin. Or Zyfaxin, Rifaximin is what it's called, that's right. So, I've got a question here from a subscriber called Urban Explorer 1000. So uh, Mrs. Urban Explorer or Mr. Urban Explorer is asking, I have had cyclical bloating for seven years since taking Zyfaxin. So one day I won't have any bloat and the next day severe lower GI bloat. My statin does not seem to be helping and four SIBO tests were negative. It's pretty debilitating. Eric, do you have any suggestions? Many thanks. Okay, Miss Urban Explorer. Um, what I'm going to suggest is you do a stool test. Okay, you do a comprehensive stool analysis, three samples on three concurrent days, including parasitology, either through, uh, you can go to uh, Genova Diagnostics, you can go to Great Plains Lab, you can go to Doctors Data Lab. Uh, there are many labs in the US. I prefer to use Doctors Data in Chicago, uh, Illinois, but you can go to any lab. A good quality uh, lab will be worth it. Make sure it's three samples. You need to find out what's going on with your gut. So if you've had multiple negative SIBO tests, because a SIBO test is a breath test, it's not going to look for beneficial bacteria. It's going to look for any bacteria that help to stimulate the production of hydrogen or methane in the gut. And that will give you a good idea on how to target your treatment. I've done uh, an amazing amount of SIBO breath testing. I do like them, but now I use them only in conjunction with a comprehensive stool test to give me much broader uh, spectrum of knowledge to give me a lot more analysis, you know, on what's going on with the patient. Okay, getting only a very small amount of information, if you want to get a very good understanding of a case, is not as good as getting a fantastic amount of information. It makes a lot more sense to really profile that person's gut so you can make the correct decisions for, for that person. The best outcomes I get for patients uh, have been on recommendations made, not just from one stool test, but generally two or three over a period of, you know, three months to 12 months. And these cases become solved cases. And some of these cases are people that have been sick for 10 to 20 years with a sick gut. They've spent thousands of dollars. They've been at 10, 20, 30, 50 doctors that have lost jobs, lost relationships, lost time, lost money, lost everything. Lost all sense of thinking they were ever going to recover until some silly guy down in New Zealand says, Hey, how about getting a stool test done? Oh my God, I never thought about that. My doctor never asked me if I wanted a stool test. And then I said, well, is it worth it for three or 400 bucks to find out what's really going on? And then we find out what's going on, finally, after maybe all those years. So if you've had cyclical bloating for seven years, the question is, what the heck is going on in your gut? All right. So the SIBO test is not going to look for candida. It's not going to look for parasites. As I mentioned, it's not going to look for beneficial bacteria. It'll only look for the production of gases, okay? Two types of gases to see what bacteria are producing this gas. So the treatment's not really targeted then, is it? So you need more information. Now, let's talk about Zyfaxin. Ever since I found out about Zyfaxin several years ago, I started to get excited with it. And with several patients in the States in the early days, I started to recommend Zyfaxin until I started to discover, to my horror, that many of these patients, um, in fact, didn't only recover, this is well over half, didn't only recover, they actually got worse, just like Urban Explorer got worse. I've noticed the same thing with metronidazole or Flagyl. I just don't recommend any more of these drugs. No more Zyfaxin, no more metronidazole. My clinic stopped using these now a few years ago now. I used to use them occasionally. I used to work in medical centers, and thought a good balance between natural and pharmaceutical is the right approach for people. But I'm absolutely now adamant that pharmaceutical is not the right approach for nearly all people. I believe that in most cases that the collateral damage is worse than anything. So I've just looked at Google here, interestingly, and I found a nice study here looking at basically what happened to people after Zyfaxin was given. And it looks like, let me have a look here, 43.7% of patients at nine months uh, had the same recurrence of SIBO that they had. So almost half of people who took Cyfaxin got the same problem back, you know, well within a year. Uh, the recurrence of SIBO is documented in 12.6% of patients at three months, 
27.5 uh, at six months and 43.7 at nine months. So you can work that out within 18 months, 19 months, you know, it'll be 100%. So it'll all come back again. So this was a study involving quite a few people. Rifaximin in irritable bowel syndrome, rationale, evidence, and clinical use. This is a 2013 study. You can Google it. You'll find it. I'm sure you will. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've not read studies like this uh, saying the similar things with grapefruit seed extract or oregano oil. In my clinical experience, not that I've seen these long-term studies done, in my clinical experience, uh, grapefruit seed extract, oregano oil, when combined with anti, uh, other antimicrobials, works beautifully for irritable bowel syndrome. And we don't get the recurrence of symptoms that we see with drugs like rifaximin. So my recommendations are, if you're watching this and you've either used rifaximin or are thinking about using it, is to think very carefully about these kind of pharmaceutical drugs, because it's just another antibiotic. In another 10 years, there'll be another antibiotic discovered that's apparently the wonderful miracle cure drug, but the problem is they create more damage long-term than they solve in the short term. So you need to think carefully about these kind of pharmaceutical medications and what they're doing to your beneficial bacteria. If you do want to use rifaximin, I highly recommend you do a stool test before and then several months after rifaximin to see exactly what you started with and what you ended up finishing with. That's the intelligent approach. So what can you do for the severe GI bloke? Well, as I mentioned, I'm an explorer. Get the stool test done, and I firmly believe that you're going to have a chronic lack of beneficial bacteria, especially the lactobacillus species, but maybe also the bifidobacteria. So should you supplement now and then test later? No. Test now. Do the test right now. Find out what you're lacking or what needs is still imbalanced to work on that, and it's going to get rid of your severe blow. Hope that answers your question. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for the question.